welcome to the Parsons Peebles Monarchs preview show. I'm joined today by Stephen Lumsden. Thank you very much for joining us, Stephen. No worries, mate. Uh, so, Stephen, a massive week ahead for the Monarchs. Obviously, we've got a double header next week, uh, working 10 and then Ipswich. Big matches for the boys. Red Car are on form. We've dropped out of the playoff positions for the first time since pretty much the first week of the season. These are huge matches. Massive. As you touched on Red Car there, they've been a threat for a while, I thought, certainly since they've strengthened. Um, yeah, we'll just need to go and rack up some wins and then make sure that we are the ones that take the last spot. And obviously, one of the, the major boosts for the Monarchs is we'll get through all the, the meetings and the week and stuff we'll have this week, but we're looking at having a full 1-7 back for the first time since middle of June, I believe, yeah. um, with Sam back. So you're in the pitch quite a lot. Just how much does that mean having the full 7 back in and your captain back in there as well? No disrespect to any, any of the other guys, but having Sam back is, is enormous. Absolutely enormous. Um, Talisman and leader. Um, Mark coming back is fantastic as well. We've, we've obviously missed him. Um, it's going to be, be great. Good having the, the, the one to seven back. Yeah, and obviously, we, we start off with Workington's the first match. Their owner, Laura Morgan, came out during the week and basically slighted the performances. I think they've had three home defeats in the last four or five. They've not picked up any points away from home. However, a team that comes here with the likes of Cookie, Jorgensen, Proctor, they can't be discounted. Cook and Jorgensen especially, yep, they're, they're, a, they're a strong looking squad on paper, um, they've obviously had their, their, uh, their own setbacks with their, uh, with their reserve, even the way you did and, and stuff like that, so we need to take advantage of that, the greatest respect to them, double headers are always fun, <laughs> uh, so yeah, we just need to take advantage of this. And, and would you say it's maybe a, a slight advantage, and this is no offence to Workington, but you'd, you'd say looking at the two teams, Workington are maybe the weaker, or certainly looking at the league table, getting that meeting in first, because there might be a wee bit of rust, you know, it's been maybe four weeks by the time we get to Friday, but it's since our time, the Monarchs last had a full team meeting here. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So you mentioned that the Comets reserve uh, spots there, one of their reserves is James Sargent, uh, he was at Armadale last week for the, the very successful Caledonian Riders Championship, and I caught up with James after that. So James, uh, so here we're working to next week, another big match and say so working to owners Laura came out during the week and was a wee bit scathing in some away performances, so you're looking for a big one next week? Yeah, I think we need to we need to start winning away from home, even out on the work to now but uh, not not the best of seasons, I've struggled a bit this year, but I wanted to turn that round before the end of the year and finish on a finish on a positive but, uh, but a good performance and thing. But um now I'm looking forward to it, I've had a spin tonight, so a little bit of practice you can call it, so yeah. And it's a track, obviously you've got quite a bit of experience for your days with Glasgow, um, you've had some very good rides here in the past, is it a track that you enjoy? Yeah, I like, I like uh, little technical tracks like here in Ipswich and places like that, I think they suit me a little bit better, so yeah, I'm looking forward to next week, I need to, I need to prove a point really, I need to get out of this little bit, I'm stuck in. And is there anything you can put that down to? You know, is there anything with the bikes or has it just, just been one of those years? I wish I could put that something now. <laughs> Trying to find answers, but just keep riding, keep keep positive in mind, and um, try and get through it. And how has the the morale been in the pits at Workington? Obviously, you, met, you mentioned a run of a run of bad performances. Is it easy for the head to go down, or are the boys still rallying round and, and going for it just to, to prove their worth for the end of the season? Um, my head's been down, so <laughs> but now we've got some good lads in the team. We've got Ty, uh, Ty and Craig, and uh, it's a good team to be in. It's just um, shame for well, just a bit gutted. I can't score more points for him. And you mentioned Cookie there, obviously potentially going to be a Grand Prix rider last year. You know, is that an inspiration to some of you say, oh, a guy like Craig came to the sport weight and now at 31 or 32 hitting the pinnacle? Yeah, definitely. I mean, just watching him ride around work is an inspiration. He rides it, just perfect. Well, that's perfect. So, yeah, it's, um, it's always good to have someone like that in your team you can look up to him and him try and ride like And then just for yourself, just look at the pick up for the rest of the season, remind the promoters what you can do and look to a team place for next year. Just, just remind myself what I can do. I just need to, just need to put some good matches, and I'm not letting it end like this. I can't let it end on a bad, bad term this year. I know it's been a rough year, and you, but everyone has rough years. But I, I want to turn it around for end of the season. Thanks very much for time. All the best. Cheers. Cheers. Um, so Stephen, the very forthright views which are there is admitted he's not happy with his own form. He's kind of admitted he's been letting himself and people down. He'll be determined to have a strong end to the season. A track that he normally does pretty well. At. Yeah, definitely. He was he was certainly excited for us when he when he when he was first coming through. Um, he had a very very successful time when he was at Glasgow. 
he's a he's a good rider. It's it's almost strange seeing his scores. Um, huge talent, and he, he will go go far. It's, as I say, it's strange to see him scoring the way he is just now. I mentioned that before as well, so you spend a lot of time in the pits with riders and we've maybe seen it with some of our own guys this year as well. Um, you know, what, what is that Mike, what is it that clicks in someone's head that they go for scoring? I, mean, oh, I guess if anyone knew the answer yeah. to that, then it would be a million dollar question. Yeah. But it's strange how a guy that's been so consistent seems to have made that jump to being a, a good solid second yeah. string um, and potentially open at the elite league uh, has taken a step back. Sometimes it's the silliest thing and you would never believe a seat position wrong or, or something like that. It just it's, it's maybe not necessarily the answer, but in the, in the rider's head, that it's just that, oh, that's it. And it's, it's a difficult one to explain, as you say, if, you, if we knew the answer to that. Would... And obviously, looking at the top end again, um, Kuki, we've, we've kind of missed him. He's missed a couple of meetings here at the National. Um, he's still a Monarchs legend. Wasn't it great to see that result come into Russia the other week? And if Patrick Pudic does his job, a Monarchs asset is going to be in the Grand Prix next year. Fantastic, unbelievable. Uh, I, there's quite a lot of us, I think, especially connected with the club, I've seen this coming, that, and, and people may have laughed, um, but a lot of people have seen this coming, it's, it's fantastic to see it coming, coming true now. And I think it just shows, you know, going back to that, the Invincibles, as we call them, 2014, Kuki going to be in the Grand Prix, Max World Under 21 champion, Sam going into his third, fourth Grand Prix in Australia this year, Aussie champion, Aaron Fox still doing the job over in America, I believe he's American national champion again, what a team that was. Fantastic. We were talking about that earlier. Um, Stevie Warrell, what a team. What a team. Um, and now, obviously, we've got a usual uh, blast for the past. We've got two heats here um, from Workington visiting the Dale. Uh, first one was 2004, where we'll see that the legend that was Carl Stone, you're up against Rory Schlein. And then a later one from 2010, featuring now Grand Prix star Peter Kilderman. On gate two, Rory Schlein. Carl Stone, yours in gate three. And Tail Piper in gate four. Stoney's well placed here, so is Woodyfield, and the Monarchs have been pushed out of position quite badly there. Stoney leads the way. Tracking pretty good, quick neck. And Woodyfield's getting around it well. Schlein trying to line up an outside move. Better passes this year have tended to be on the inside. This would be a bad one for the Monarchs to lose at this stage, just as they would establish some dominance. They're certainly not going to catch Stonier, that's for sure, so he's broken his victory duck against the Monarchs here this season. Line's still trying to get himself into position. Here he goes on the outside, and whoa, tiny wee gap there, he's got through it. Great work by Rory Schlein, what do you feel trying to come back? So the damage slightly limited there, but still... Uh, Final race and of a match that Monarchs have in the end won fairly easily. It's Peter Kilderman riding from gate one, Matthew Weathers gate two, Chris Schramm in gate three, and Ryan Fisher gate four. And both Monarchs in this one on a maximum. Weathers again away well. Kilderman has made a decent start, but uh, Weathers has come past him there in his usual style up that inside line. Kilderman pressing Weathers. Fisher clearing off in front. Weathers trying to hold on to second, but Kilderman could be a threat here. He is. He's gone alongside Weathers. He's got through. Weathers cuts back. And he's into second. Terrific effort. Now Kilderman round the outside. And back up the inside again. Oh, great battle between these two. Let's hope it doesn't end in disaster. Weathers has got the better of it there. Kilderman's up in the air. What a thrilling effort by him. But he's almost run into his partner there. Well, that's a fantastic effort up that straight by Kilderman as he was lifting. In the end, Weathers gets the paid win. That was a sensational battle for second place there between Weathers and Kilderman. We know Kilderman's good, and he's only scored, I think, five points tonight, but... Uh, a great excitement from him in that last race, and Matthew Weathers acknowledges that. Super stuff. So cracking race in there, uh, the cracking, you get a repeat of that on Friday night. Uh, so, obviously, we've got Workington first. Um, 
we've got the, the Campbell boys out working on the track just now. They reckon they can turn the track around in 23 minutes, they've said, yeah. with a dry run this morning. They're hoping to get that down to 20. So we'll be straight on to the second match and another huge match against a very strong looking at Switch team. Massive, massive, Danny King. Uh, it's a concern seeing that they are the, the second team almost, you know, you, you'd almost like to, the greatest of respect for working thing, you'd, you'd almost like to do the hard work <laughs> first, big rocks and all that, but yeah, it's a good side. Good side. You mentioned that there, obviously, a few injury concerns maybe creeping out, which we don't know if uh, Cameron Eames or Justin Sedge will be here as we talk about this. That'll be two huge losses, particularly around Armadale, so we all know what Sedge can do. 2014 team once again, um, and Heaps has been one of the most impressive visitors here. So, while the hub gets and ride the replacement, Ipswich would have been hopeful to come here with a full seven. Yeah, yeah, especially a, a track expert like Sedge. Yeah, no miss him. And these are, I, mean, I don't think we can actually underpin how huge these matches are. I've maybe said it three or four times now, but you know, we've been in those play positions all season. We can't let it slip now. We've got another tough home fixture to come after the double header, Glasgow is the week after. Um, and some tough away fixtures with like Sheffield, Scunthorpe. Next Friday is actually started with a spell. It's six matches in eight days, I believe. You speak to the riders, they always love being on the bike. But from your point of view as somebody in the pits, is that something you enjoy being that busy or you know, can it be a bit stressful at times? No, nah, it's, it's, it's much better to be to be busy. Much better to be busy all the time. Um, time passes by as well. Uh, and you're, you're that little bit sharper, you know. And uh, obviously talking back to Ipswich, um, their co-promoter, or you know, maybe the co-promoter Chris Lowy, there's not much he's not done in the sport, former world number three, um, so his views are always always interesting here, and I caught up with him this week as well. So we're now joined by former world number three and Ipswich promoter Chris Lowy on the Monarchs preview show, so thanks very much for your time and speaking to us this morning, Chris. No problem, pleasure. So looking ahead to, to Friday, um, Obviously, a team full Armadale pedigree, and he's got Roy Schlein in there. Danny King always does well. The reserve showed up well earlier in the season. Is this a result? You know, are you heading North Oaken for a result? Um, yeah, of course. I mean, our, our playoff um, position looks looks reasonably safe, but um, you know, we we uh, we want to go into the playoffs, um, you know, full of as much confidence as we can, um, and obviously, winning breeds that confidence. So we'll, we'll we'll go there, you know, looking looking for a result. And and as you say, we've got riders that uh, tend to enjoy Armadale, but um, we, we just never seem to get a result there. So it would be nice ahead of the playoffs to, to, to go there and, and uh, get a win. And, and maybe one thing that you know that works against you, unfortunately, it seems to have been a, a bit of a common theme in the Ipswich season, and the injury bug set again. Um, obviously, Cameron and Justin, two, two very capable Armadale performers, both missing. You know, are those guys expected back for the playoffs? Um, not Justin. No, he looks uh, much more long term. He's trying to avoid surgery, and, and um, all the experts have told him that uh, he's got to have plenty of treatment, plenty of rest, um, and, and plenty of gentle physio. So um, he, he'll be out uh, for the duration. Cameron uh, is responding very well to, to his physio, and, and we are hopeful that he'll be back in time for the playoffs. Um, so, so possibly we will see the return of, of him. But uh, no, it's definitely been the story of our season you know it started obviously um, back in April losing uh, Nico Covetti and, and Daniel Hume both both uh, out for well for the season pretty much Nico is now riding um, in Italy but he's only just started so um, you know and, and then Kyle has had uh, he started the season with six weeks off um, and, and has had numerous knocks since and, and then Justin and, and Cameron so yeah it, it's been a really tough year for, for the witches of injuries but we seem to have uh, been able to hold our own and, and battle through regardless, so we're still in a good position. And then obviously you've got Thomas Jorgensen stepping in on Friday. Um, you know, the one thing with Thomas, you know you're always going to get to 100% effort. You know, that guy's a born trier. Yeah, that, that's um, you know that's what Witches fans like. Um, anybody that gives 100% all of the time will, will, would fit in well with our team. So, um, you know, that's why we went for him, obviously. Uh, he is there as as part of the meeting anyway before us, so uh, it, it makes perfect sense, really. And a, a busy spell coming up for Ipswich, obviously the, the playoff position is secured, um, but you've got four matches in six days, I believe, with visits to Armadale, Sheffield and Glasgow in there. Now, that's potentially the three other playoff teams. You know, Is this a, a chance for the Witches to lay down a marker and show what they're going to be about come playoff time? Um, I, I think it's definitely that and definitely a chance to visit the tracks that, um, you know, certainly one of which in the semi-final will, will, will be visiting. So, 
Um, it's actually an ideal finish to the season. Obviously, it wouldn't be ideal if we if we needed plenty of points from those meetings, but it, yeah. it looks like we don't need too much. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's perfect. I, I don't think it, it could have worked out any better, actually. We, we get a sneak preview of, of um, you know, how things are going to be and, and what we face. So, um, And then, of course, you know, should we qualify through the semi-final, we will have recently visited that other track. So, no, as far as I'm concerned, it, it, it is, as you said, a, a good test of, of where we stand um, opposition-wise, but also a good test on the tracks as well. And then, obviously, once it's all said and done, the playoffs start, and then it's almost like starting the season over again. Everyone goes back to zero. Ipswich have been tipped and have been there and thereabouts pretty much every year since since coming into the second tier. Is this going to be the year? Um, I hope so. <laughs> but um, we all know how tough the championship is, and so many things can play a part, not least of all, of course, the injuries that um, we've already suffered. So, um you know, yeah, of course I hope so. I have to say um, we've built, I think, some strong teams um, at the start of the season that, that just haven't matured into um, teams that have deserved to, to win championships and, and subsequently obviously haven't. But um, I believe this is the best team that we've built. Um, obviously, losing two of those key riders early doors, um, I think, has affected us. We're not as strong um, and haven't been as strong as, as we should have been. But... Um, Certainly, you know, Nathan Greaves um, replacing Daniel hasn't been a negative effect whatsoever. Um, but, of course, the more recent injuries, in particular to Justin, you know, using rider replacement uh, for a long period is, is always tough on the guys and, and not ideal. But, um, no, this, this, this in general, I think, is the best team we've had. So um, it would be great if we could go out there and, and get the silverware. Perfect. Well, thank you very much for your time this morning, Chris, and all the best for the rest of the season. No problem. Thank you. So thanks very much uh, to Chris Lowe there for taking the time. I know Ipswich had a busy weekend last weekend as well. Um, and it's always great to hear from a former British champion, a former world number three. These are the guys that we want to be involved in the sport. Definitely, definitely. And now, obviously, we had the LRB work content. We've now got the Ipswich blast for the past. Um, for some of our older fans, the first one maybe one you enjoy. We're going all the way back to 1989. Um, that was actually the first year I started watching the Monarchs. But I can remember nothing about this heat as I was four years old. Four? 24. <laughs> you're to say, no way, you're 33, Stevie. Um, so the first heat, we've got uh, Michael Coles, uh, Monarch's Legend that. And then we've got the second heat, which is a bit more recent, um, from 2012, where we've got Craig Cook, Andrew Tilly, Rowan Tungate, and Leo Annam. And it's McNamara, with Chapman coming round him, and Chapman's gone to the front. Coles got a shocking start, he's come through now. He's gone past McNamara into second place and he's chasing Chapman who looks much more convincing on the borrowed machine. Coles is pressing him though, almost up alongside him. And Michael Coles may come through if he keeps his head. Bad corner there. Looks as though McNamara is comfortably in third so he doesn't need to worry about his partner. All he needs to do is chase Chapman. Coming in to challenge now as they move into the final lap, but he's still got quite a bit to do. Oh, and he's horribly wide there. So is Chapman. Final bend, it's going to be tight. Cole's cutting back. And he's did it. He did it by half a wheel. Tremendous ride by Michael Cole. Well, let's hope we get them away this time. Again there to be honest but the referee's given up and let it go this time and look at uh, Tungate another tremendous effort to try and get round the outside of Cook they might have done it this time he has that's a superb effort until he's passed uh, Lanham momentarily he's still there Cook goes for the big blast but it's difficult in these conditions Desperately trying to hang on there. Cook's again gone for the outside run and he's whoa, dicing with danger out there, I think. Now he comes down for the cutback. Brilliant effort by Tungate to hang on. Cook's really putting him under pressure. 
Where's he going to go this time? Once again, trying to blast for the inside, and he's done it. Oh, terrific ride by Cook, and a good run by Tungate as well, but a 4-2 in the end. That finally takes it it's over the finishing line, but uh, that was a great race. So some more fantastic action there, and thanks very much to Mike Hunter as always for providing that. Um, I'd say that the Monarchs must have one of the best video databases in the sport. Um, Mike himself is a self-confessed anorak, but it's always handy for things like this for our guys, you know? Yeah, an oracle. Ah, definitely. <laughs> uh, and obviously, so going into the Monarchs team, we've mentioned a little bit about them. You know, we're back to the 1-7. seven. We're hoping, it, and you've been in the pits a lot, you know, is the spirit still there? Do you guys still believe that the playoffs are in their grasp? De definitely, I don't think. I don't think it's ever really crossed our mind that it's not. Um, Max is in the, the, the position that, that he, he feels most comfortable in. So mentally that might you know that might spot him on a little. Um, we, we've seen how well he scored when he was at reserve last time. Josh has got that, that added confidence for, for being there and scoring the double figures I think it was three back to back. Yeah. So I think we're in a good position. You mentioned that you sort of did the top five, you would say, is maybe set. Obviously, Sam's back and appears to have come back without too much of effect. Um, he's been scoring well for Wolverhampton. Same with Mark. Um, yeah, maybe dropped off a little bit for the form he was shown a couple of months ago, but he's still consistent. A little bit injured, green ones, but once he gets all sorted, it'll be fine. Uh, Ricky, well, this must be the best form Ricky's ever been in. Um, I spoke to him after the Red Cup match, and he says it's, it's coming easy. The boys are just showing up and jumping on the bike, and the points are coming. Um, and then, as you mentioned, Josh had that great spell reserve. Anytime we've spoken to Josh for the start of the season, he doesn't care if it's number one or number seven, if it's Jason Doyle or you know a, a junior that's next to him, he always believes he won't win. So for me, the key bit going the rest of the season could be that reserve. Um, Max has struggled a wee bit recently, you're right, but hopefully confidence boost to winning the Belgian Golden Helmet, prestigious uh, tournament that that is. Uh, and then the Caledonian Riders Championship last night. It's always nice for anyone to get a bit of silverware, so hopefully he'll be back. And then Mitchell, well Mitchell seems to be riding every day of the week just now, he's had guest bookings in the Premiership in Swindon, he had a heat one there, guest booking at Redcar, uh, he's got some two heat matches for Stoke, and then the six matches for the Monarchs, so for me that could be the important bit, and as long as Max can get back to that form, he showed that he was there earlier in the season, Mitch keeps doing what he's doing, then we're actually maybe set up as best as we've been in the last few months. I think you're right, I think it's, pr it's probably fair to say as well that the, the top three have never all fired at the same time, they've always been, they've always had strong spells and I've, I've, I've said it since you know, May that coming to this point I think, I think that will come together, I genuinely think that it will all come together. Excellent. Well, one man that will be key to that um, is Mitchell Davy, and I caught up with Mitchell last Friday as well, we'll get from him now. So much two big matches this week uh, as we go towards the playoffs. Yeah, definitely. You know, um, bit of bit of stress coming up with the double header, but you know, um, you know, it could it could be could be good for us to you know we'll get a lot, a lot of track time on the night and yeah, if we get some good results, you know, it'll it'll put us in a in good position. And looking forward to obviously Sam due back in the pits. That must be a big one for the team, not just at number one, but the captain being back in the pits with the boys. Yeah, that's it. You know, it's always good to have the the original one to seven back together. You know, it's ne it's never the same when you get guests and and things and like that in. So, yeah, it'd be good to have Sam back. And uh, Red Car are putting us a bit under pressure. Somebody decided to score page six for them to help them win against Ipswich last week. Um, but you know, we we need these matches. If we don't win these matches at home, then that that could be it. Yeah, that's it. You know, I think. We're we're in we you know we had a couple of matches in hand so we, our, really our fate's in our hands you know for me I'm <laughs> I'm just doing my job you know racing racing me likes my job and you know if I get a guest booking I'm gonna take it so yeah it's probably probably you know more more points than you know what what Edinburgh supporters would have liked me to have scored <laughs> but um, at the end of the day they they were that strong it wasn't gonna affect the results so yeah we just yeah we got to focus on ourselves and get the points in the bag and two two tough matches you know Workington come up with Cookie. Ty Proctor's going well, Mason Campton's going well, we've seen James Sargent do well on the, the Caledonian Riders Championship, they're on Ipswich, we don't need to say too much about the likes of Rory Schlein, Danny King, these aren't going to be easy matches either. No, that's it, it's going to be it's a massively stressful night, you know, you, you can't afford to slip up too much and, you know, you got to have everything working right and also, you know, have no problems, you know, they're, they're quite stressful on man and machine, the, the double header, so, yeah, a lot, a lot of pressure's on, but... Um, 
yeah, you know, they're like you said, they're good good sides, good riders. So yeah, we're gonna have to be on our game. And obviously, a busy spell for yourself. You mentioned you just want to ride the bike. I believe you you had obviously two meetings over the weekend with Stoke. You were guessing again for Swindon. I'm talking to a, a elite league heat leader style rider here after your heat two down the other week. Um, is this what you prefer though? You know, you would like would your idea just to be on the bike every day of the week? Yeah, you know, it makes it makes it easier. But then at the same time. You look at the miles you you cover and you, and you go, damn it! I need a day off just to just to you know a bit of recovery. But um, yeah, you know you like keeping busy and when things are going right, you know you just want to keep riding. Thanks again for joining us, Mitch. No worries. Right so thanks very much to Mitchell there for taking the time. Um, it's a difficult night for him last Friday, but it shows the, the character of the man that he's still willing to take a couple of minutes to chat to me after. Um, so that, that's pretty much us this week. Um, I've seen another huge week for the Parsons People's Monarchs. We start on Friday night uh, with a double header. We then move on to Berwick on the Saturday. We've got Scunthorpe on the Sunday, Sheffield on the Thursday, Glasgow here on the Friday, Workington away on the Saturday. Perfect, what a week. Um, and hopefully we'll see you all there. And we'll be back with a Friday focus on Saturday morning. Thanks very much for watching. Thank you.